Welcome everyone to my podcast. I have Carolyn Woodward on here from Woodwolf Kennels. And today we will be addressing all of the anonymous questions that Carolyn got. I try to stay drama free, but me and Carolyn are good friends and I will always support her. And I actually thought about doing a live and just kind of popping off on Saturday when everyone is going after her. And I honestly probably would have if I wasn't so busy visiting Sharon and Tara. So I'm just going to ask the questions that other people asked and she's going to answer them. We're going to try to keep it in the same category. Some are pretty random and some have have quite a few of the same topics. So the first album that we're going to go through are the random questions. So first question, Carolyn, who are you trying to get with? Um, my husband. Um, yeah. So just a background too. Taylor was sent all of the messages. So we've divided them in categories and that's what she's going through. So she's got to go through the weird ones like this. Do you have any piercing? He used to have a belly button ring and then I got pregnant. Someone said you never reply to me. I apologize for that. I am extremely busy and I have been told I'm one of the hardest people to get in touch with. So it's more like people have to call, text, call, text, call, call. And then I finally, when I'm not busy, I answer. I can definitely agree to this. I think maybe I've said and Carolyn probably five or six <laughs> texts over the last few months, none of which have been answered. Um, then I messaged her through Facebook Messenger. That's usually the best place. Sometimes through Instagram. Most of the time she would read it and then not answer. And then maybe a few days later be like, oh my God. And then you texted me. Said, yeah, so yeah. don't take it personal. She's really bad at answering everyone. It's really um, not but- personal. <laughs> Yeah, we're all super busy. Carolyn's super busy. She has a little baby and a bunch of dogs. So, okay. Someone says, you're so attractive. Thank you. Oh, of course. Not dog related. What are you most proud of? Any personal not dog related goals for the year? I definitely think like the most proud is such a hard word to describe. Um, I think one of the most things that I'm I think most excited and happy about obviously is my son. Um, my husband and I have been together for 10 years. So it was kind of like this. Okay, are you ready? I'm ready. Let's go. And finally, we ended up getting pregnant. And so I think like the biggest like achievement and in general in my life would be having my son. Oh, that's so cute. I feel the same way. Yeah, um, best thing ever. So yeah. how's Conan doing? Will you be keeping a Conan puppy? And what litters are you planning? With <laughs> okay, great. Um, so Conan is doing great. He's sleeping over here. Um, he's doing excellent. He's almost eight. It's crazy to believe that he's almost eight. Um, he does have a litter planned with Isra this year, um, which is Dara's baby out of Colt. It was my Dara Colt litter, and she is just like Dara. Excellent temperament, excellent drives. I mean, she's phenomenal. So I'm really, really happy with that. And I might be breeding him to Electra. That's the dog I used to own that I sold to Shannon, and that's just kind of up in the air right now. But he's doing great, and I do plan to keep a puppy out of him, but I will probably do it when he's like 10. That way... He's a little bit older. Clark's a little bit older. I can really devote into that puppy like I did with Conan. There's so many people asking how Ducks is doing and mm-hmm. that, and how is the search going of finding him a new home? Yeah, there were like, what, 20 questions just about Ducks, yeah. Um, yeah. which is amazing. Like, I will tell you guys, it has been so encouraging when all of that happened that the community came together and they were like, no, this is not okay. You know, we we we'll stand with you. And even people that I don't percent get along with, they still came to the table and were like, no, like this needs to stop. People like this need to stop. Dogs being neglected and abused needs to stop. And we've seen what that leads into, which is the death of Kadira. Um, and that the neglectfulness of ducks and due to that he's extremely stunted I don't know if he'll ever mentally be where he should be but he's definitely on that road I actually just took pictures I need to upload but I do have a home oddly enough back in Arkansas but it is with somebody in the vet med industry and I've kind of told them everything going on and been super transparent with them and she's been amazing and we're kind of coordinating a time that we can meet in Atlanta and ducks can go with her so it should be here soon within the next few weeks that he'll voyage to his new venture but he's doing great like he's thriving he's big and beefy he's not very tall but boy got some beef yeah revel's pretty short too so for anyone that doesn't know revel is his litter mate Mm -hmm. um me and carolyn co-own her and yeah i mean the whole situation i think anyone that heard about it is just traumatizing to see the photos to hear the story to see what happened to her and then what could have what almost happened to him i mean he was Mm -hmm. on his like last few days if he wasn't saved then who would have known who would have known what would have happened yeah 
Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Honestly, that situation, along with some other situations that have happened in the last year and the last few months, have really discouraged me from breeding before I even started. I mean, I've been working all these years to title and train my dogs and to health test them and to get them prepped for breeding. And now that I'm pretty, I'm here. I mean, I'm still gonna have my litters this year, but it's Hard. it's gonna be a lot a lot shorter term than I originally planned because of stories like this. Obviously, Carolyn, you have like so many amazing homes, but one or two instances Bad. like these really just Hurt makes you not want to do it anymore. It are too. Um, and this kind of actually goes into another question that appears later on in the, I can't remember what tab it's under. It's in like the general random population questions, but I'll speak about it. And it, it's the question that says, where did you go? We've missed you. Oh yeah. It's that's that the question. first one. Yeah. So that kind of plays into it. So when all of that happened with ducks and Kadira, obviously like it was so emotionally draining and not, not that having a baby is an excuse to like walk away, but with everything going on postpartum, like postpartum depression is absolutely a thing. It's terrible. Like you don't even want it. You don't know why you have the emotions you do about everything, yeah. but you do. And when all of that happened, I looked at my husband and I was like, I just can't do social media. Like I can't, I can't be on here right now. I need, I need time to heal. And I know a lot of people don't understand that because you didn't go through it. You know, you didn't have to get the call at 11 o'clock from the vet saying this is the worst case of animal abuse and neglect that they've ever seen in 40 years. You know, you didn't have to see those photos right away. You could take it at your own rate where I didn't have that opportunity. I had to face it head on. I had to get my dog. I had to see the dead body, you know, like, and it just emotionally, I just wasn't ready to come back. Plus all the dumb drama that I get in my kennel gets like on top of everything, I didn't need social media to feel validated. I didn't need that. I needed to spend time with my family. I needed to spend time with my dogs. I needed to spend time with my owners. And I needed these last four months off just to breathe because it's been wonderful. You know? They're not okay. They're not okay. Uh, and I'm never going to pretend that they are. And you know, I just have to respect my peace and, and my privacy. You know? Yeah, a, a lot of people think that they need to have access to the breeder, the trainer, the person like they're just at their disposal. But we're people too. We have lives and Absolutely. babies and our own dogs that we have to take care Families, of. Families, friends, home. like. Yeah. Life is a lot yeah. bigger than dog Instagram. Absolutely. Absolutely. Would you sell a puppy for the purpose of a service dog? This is a great question because I get these things often and I have like a whole write up. I'm not going to read it, um, but I have like a whole write up that I send to people. I typically recommend a young dog that's already health tested. That's already temperament tested. You know, you already know what you're getting versus an eight, nine week old puppy that could have dysplasia, could have issues, could have temperament problems, could have reactivity. And if you are not skilled enough of a person, handler, or trainer, or work with a trainer to deal with reactivity, to deal with dominance, to deal with these things that these working line dogs are filled with, a lot of power and present, then maybe a puppy isn't the right direction for you. With that said though, I have successfully placed working dogs into service dog homes with the disclaimer of, I can't guarantee this puppy is going to be a perfect dog. I try to do everything I can to make sure that, you know, the parents are health tested, the parents temperament is in order, the pedigree is there. You know, like I make sure the building blocks for a potential good dog is there. However, I can't guarantee the temperament after they leave that eight, nine week old puppy from my house. And I would say the majority of people that have gotten service dog prospects for me are very happy. Obviously you have your two, three outliers that are like, this isn't the dog I wanted. It has a problem or this or that. And I mean, I'm sorry. I really am sorry. It didn't turn out perfect. But I tell absolutely everybody, if you need this dog to work out as a service dog, please get a young dog. Please do not get a puppy. But if you're willing to be open that maybe this dog's route isn't service dog work, maybe it's dog diving, maybe it's just to be a companion, maybe it's barn hunt, maybe it's nose work, whatever it is, if that's what's best for the dog, that they're willing to try a different avenue. I definitely agree on the young dog thing rather than an eight, nine week old puppy. I mean, it's hard to look at a puppy that young and be like, yep, this is, this is going to be it. Obviously you know, considering their parents and yeah. their temperament at that age, it could give you a good idea of the dog you'll be working with, but there's nothing guaranteed at a puppy no. that age, any dog really, but you know, especially one that young. Have you found a balance between the dogs and having a baby? I have two children now under three and have been wanting to dabble in sport, but I'm not sure how to go about it. So I will say having an infant is extremely difficult because rather whatever route you go with feeding the baby, that baby needs to be with you quite often. And so having to travel, and again, it all depends on what is near you, right? Are you married to a decoy? Are you not? Do you have access to a club? 
do you not? You know, people that have access to a club have access to a decoy. I think there is more symbiotic relationship and you figure out how to make it work, right? I think if you're isolated and you don't have a club and you don't have a decoy and you don't have a training system, I think traveling two, three hours to go to a decoy and then come back, it's going to be difficult, especially if these people don't know you, these people don't know your baby. So if you plan to have kids, for anybody planning to have kids, I definitely recommend finding a club, finding a decoy, finding these people before and then going from there. But I will say it's difficult. My dogs have definitely not done a ton of bite work with my my dogs really don't need bite work. They need to be worked every day. They need to be played with every day. They need to be fed every day. They need to be have water every day. Those are the things that my personal dogs need. And bite work is more of a luxury. Um, and I wish it wasn't right now. Trust me. I totally wish I had the time to drive to this PSA club that's two and a half, three hours from me because they're awesome. And I would love to work my dogs there twice a week. Like my coworker is and her dog is badass, man. Like she is kicking butt and taking names. And, you know, she doesn't have a family. She doesn't have kids. It's just harder. And I think people that don't have kids don't understand how it all works. So I guess the answer to your question is when they get a little bit older, it's a little bit easier. But you've got to find a club. You've got to find a support system. And you've got to find people that are willing to work with you and that kid and the baby. Because when you're out on that field handling your dog, most people don't have their toddler right next to them, you know? Um, so yeah. you have to trust the environment that you're also bringing your kids into. That's a big thing too, because not all dog clubs are kid friendly. I've been to quite a few that I would never take a child to just because the culture isn't the best everywhere. Do you have any ethical show line breeders that you would recommend? I would love to add a German Shepherd to the family in the next few years, but I'm worried a working line will be a little bit too much of what I'm looking for. So show line breeders, my best advice, whether you go German show line or you go AKC, right? Because there's two different types. They look completely completely different. And my best advice is if you're interested in AKC, American line, show line, or if you're interested in a German line, show line is go to the shows that they're at, because you're going to be able to meet the breeders, you're going to be able to meet the owners, you're going to be able to meet these dogs in person versus just seeing a picture of them online. I've met several really nice American show line breeders just going to shows. And same with German show line breeders. I've met several of the canine extreme, the handlers, the dogs, the owner, and I've had great conversations with him. So my best advice is looking up SV shows, looking at those German show line shows, if that's what you're interested in too, and trying to go to a couple, even if they're about two, three hours away from you, it's definitely worth the drive. And then same with AKC, go to the AKC shows near you, talk to people, talk to the breeder, talk to the owners there. I don't know enough about show lines to ethically recommend what line or what breeding program or anything like that because I'm, I don't follow them. I know Kendall De Rossi breeds some show lines. She does the working show cross and I do work with her. So maybe ask her and then just go to the shows. Can you list the dogs you own and have on your property? Yes. So inside is Conan, Mika, Mia, Cheyenne, Nitro, Tox, Cora. However, Cora is about to leave if she's pregnant. So those are the ones that stay in my house. And then those the ones that crate and rotate in the kennels. And I co-own Jerry and Isra with Misty. I have Ozki that's about to leave to a home in Tennessee with a girl named Rachel. She's super. Ozki is from my soggy Kiri litter. And I had originally co-owned her with a local girl, but but she ended up moving back to Alaska. So I kept Oski back here, which is totally fine. Like she has a Malinois now and she's doing amazing with that Malinois. So, and then I have Max and Max is getting his orthos done on Tuesday. And depending on how they look is depending on which direction he'll go. Max is from my end litter and he was owner surrendered back to me. I'm no fault of the dog, but the owner was having some medical issues. I'm not to get too much into personal detail, but they decided that it would be best for Max to return back to me. Um, and so I do have potential have a home either way lined up. I just kind of have to see what his orthos looks like. And then I have the brothers, Rip and Reduck. Oh Lord, they are crazy. And Rip is a owner return as well. Again, not to go too much into detail about that because it's personal, but I have no hard feelings towards Rip's prior owner. It just didn't match up right. He's a great dog nonetheless. And I have a home coming to look at him this Thursday. Oh, and then I, yeah, and then I have Koala. My cool Lulu. And she is my keeper puppy from Agro and Flash. So that is everybody. I will That's say cool. it works because pretty much like everybody gets along where they're at. So like all my house dogs get along except for Tox. He's the only one that like I have to be like, don't do this or don't do that or don't go out with this dog or because he doesn't 100% like Nitro, which is understandable because he's an intact male. So yeah. but Nitro gets along with everybody. So yeah. And then all the ones that rotate crazy 
Gray, and Kennel and Yard, they can all be let out together. So Isra, Jerry, Rip, Redux, and Koala are non-stop playing. <laughs> like they go crazy and they tear up my yard and they have a blast and they're all good off leash. None of them are anything bad and they all get along. So I'm really, really blessed. Um that they can all kind of play every day and get along. Next question is, do you have any trial plans? Um, the answer is yes. I am not a who at the moment. Out seem to be a perpetual issue. And that goes to the lack of consistent bite work training. Because I have some dogs that are deciding that because we only do it once a month, that outs are optional. So we got to get those solid. But I do, I am signed up for that PSA trial in Atlanta in April. So I will be attending with a dog. Which one? Not sure yet. <laughs> um, but I paid for like three spots, three or four. So I'll definitely be showing up at least with two dogs. I think there are worse problems to have than your dog not outing. So I when are you breeding Cobalt, Vom, Woodwolf, the greatest dog you've ever produced? Oh my gosh, that's from Brad. That's from his owner. Don't let him fool you. Um, We shall see, Bradford. I don't really know. Maybe next year. He is like the most awesome dog ever i will say like he comes to my house quite often and he's an extremely nice dog but <laughs> brad you need to do more with your dog go title your dog Brad. yeah continue go get that ba where do you get your hip x-rays done my dog needs one soon so i use saint francis animal hospital and i only use dr landis there dr landis has been x-raying my dogs for years she used to be a military working dog vet and used to do x-rays on all of them so i felt extremely confident when i met her a few years ago that i was like oh yeah she's gonna be able to do my dogs you know x-rays extremely nice and I remember one day I showed her the positioning I needed and she was like, I think Cheyenne was the first dog she x-rayed for me. And I was like, I need you to do them just like this. <laughs> and she was like, okay. And took Cheyenne back there with no sedation and got the most perfect x-rays I have ever seen. And I was like, uh, hired. And so ever since then, she has x-rayed probably over 20 dogs for me. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's quite a rap sheet, but she's fantastic and I trust her and there's nobody else in my town that I would trust enough to do it. Not that they couldn't do it. It's just, I know Holly will literally do them exactly how I need them done and will show me and be like, what do you think about this? How do you think about this? Which x-ray do, do you prefer? Versus, oh, we'll email them to you in three days. You know, I'm like, no, I'm not leaving here without seeing those x-rays. Uh-uh. Yeah. <laughs> And Holly, and Holly is also Dr. Landis, but she is also extremely great with all of my dogs in the sense of like, she doesn't muzzle and she like, she doesn't have to, she doesn't feel a need to. She feels very comfortable with my dogs. She also does chiropractic work and acupuncture there too. So she has a lot of experience with working breeds and knowing how to interact with them and what to do. So I always recommend if you're in the Augusta area that you go see Dr. Landis and I'm actually going to see her tomorrow morning with Mac. Yeah. Um, what happened with Von Den? Do you know how to pronounce it? Yeah, Von, I don't know how to pronounce it, but I know the I know which one you're talking about. Von the Den. Von Den matched in whatever. Madden kennels. That, that's Alana. Do you so want to get trying, into this with the rest of the thing? Yeah, let's just move past this one for right now because I'm trying not to get sued by her because it feels like she's sending out cease and desist letters like french fries at McDonald's, how you just can't have one. Yeah. I've been preparing for seven years now, researching and learning how to have my very first dog. I chose a German Shepherd dog. I fell in love with them. I want a dog to train with obedience and protection work, but I know it's not easy at all. What's the best advice you could give me? Where can I start? That was a lot. Okay, so... For starters, I recommend going with a good breeder that health tests their dogs and can tell you about the dogs and why they're breeding the dogs and why they complement each other and what their goals are for the pairing. Number one. Number two, I recommend that you look for local clubs near you and see if there's anybody that does the things that you want to do near you and then go visit them without your puppy first. That's a big thing. Anytime I visit somewhere new when I was starting out, I would never take my dog because I wanted to see how they trained. I wanted to see what they trained. I wanted to see everything before I took my puppy, my dog into that environment. Because my background comes from Conan, who was kind of bleh as a puppy. And so it's like, I didn't want to go somewhere that I felt like they would back time with my dog until it bit, you know, like I want to see them building prey. I want to see them building a relationship with the dog. I want to see them focusing more on the behavior and the emotion versus just the finished product. How do you feel about politics and sport and governing organization? 
Um, so I should have pre-read all of these. Silence is loud. I try not to get in the middle of the politics. Do I agree with everything that's being changed and done and enforced? No. But do I have to abide by the laws for the trials and for the sport? Yes. It's a very gray area. That's, there's a lot of gray. There's a lot of things that I feel as an American that we should be able to do, you know, under AKC that now is, is banned because of the SV, like long to short coat pairings and AIs, TCIs, SIs, you know, I don't agree with those for our breed. Every Same. single other breed, you can do a TCI. And it's totally fine. Every single other breed. But now German Shepherds, I don't know. Okay, let me give some backstory. I don't know who knows what. So we kind of have to elaborate on that. The SV in Europe and Germany has, this has been a long standing thing that you're not allowed to breed a long hair German Shepherd to a short hair German Shepherd and register the puppy. So now in America, this past, was it this past year? I think it was this past year. It has now been implemented here under the SV, GSDCA, USCA bodies. Me Meaning, if you get a puppy out of a long to stock pairing, that puppy cannot be shown in the SV, so it can never get a show rating. It can never get a breed survey. Um, and don't I? I want to say you can do its SV hips and elbows, but it just won't be able to be bred under the SV. Yeah, um, you can still do the hips and elbows through SV. Okay. Okay. And you can still do an AD. You can still do all the levels of IGP. However, you can never breed survey. You can never make a world team and you can never show rate that dog, which is really disheartening. Um, and it's not just now long to stock coat parents. It's now technically AI, TCI and surgical as well. So all these breeders with dozens of dogs on frozen. Now, none of those puppies born in the United States can ever be show rated, can ever be breed surveyed and can never make a world team. So I feel like the gene pool in general is losing out. I don't know why it has been implemented in America when it never has been implemented before until now. But I feel really, really bad for myself too, because I have semen on Gandalf and he is one of the most remarkable dogs I've ever had my hands on. And now if and when I go to breed that, it's like there's this gray area of if he's passed away, it's a lot of gray. You know, and it just sucks. I think it just sucks. I think it sucks for everybody. And I don't really know why it was agreed that it would be implemented. Sorry, but here we are. <laughs> <laughs> but here we are and thankfully the american kennel club does not care they you can breed along to short and you can do ai you can do a tci they are governing body which is the american kennel club you can still register all the puppies they can do everything and then some in akc there's no stipulations against it it's only literally only if you want to do the schutzen category it's not PSA, it's not UDA, it's not APBDA, it's not Street Dog, it's not any other organization. It is just IGP, hashtag Schutzen, hashtag IP. I can't believe that you included Street Dog, which I think you met Keenan <laughs> Kiwi. Yay, over one of the ring sports because... Oh, or any ring sport. You're right. You're right. You're right. Mondio, <laughs> French, KMP Visa, APA. None of that. None of those organizations care. It's literally yeah. just GSDCA, USCA's as Yeah. Shepherd people. Shepherd people. Are in yeah, shepherd people. Enough said. Um, <laughs> shepherd people. So is Tali okay? I haven't seen any updates on her. Yes. So I actually talked to Jordan yesterday. So for those of you who don't know, a few years ago, I co-owned a puppy with 13... I think that's where she was. Girl, she was 12. It was for, I believe, her 12th birthday. And we got that puppy from the same breeder that you got Savvy from, correct? Yep. Kim? Yeah. Um, and she's an incredible dog. Absolutely. They love her to death. She ended up not passing one of her hips, which, I mean, it happens, you know? And we were upset about it. But at the end of the day, Tally is the best dog Jordan has ever had. And I talked to her yesterday about Tally, and she said she's doing great. She couldn't love her more. She sleeps in her bed every night, and she's beyond thankful for that dog. So we're really, really thankful. Kim has been so great and a great breeder. I highly recommend her. Yeah. Kim Vale with Albert and Shepherds. She's amazing. And Kim all the time she is one of my favorite people in the entire world highly yeah, recommend she's fantastic. Um, Absolutely. i think she's an underrated working dog breeder she Absolutely. has a lot of pet dog clients but savvy is one of the best shepherds ever i'm obsessed yeah. with her um yeah. do you still keep in touch with the person who has boone 
They love the controversy, huh? They love this shit. Um, I wish. I wish I did. I wish I could. I wish I did. I wish I wasn't hated by her. Um, she doesn't have me blocked on one of my accounts, so I still see her stuff. She's gonna watch this and she's gonna block your ass on whatever account. <laughs> I'd miss him, you know? I mean, it's hard because I think people see the amount of puppies and the amount of litters and they go, oh, there's no way she could care about this one puppy. But let's give a little backstory onto that one puppy. Boone was out of my bee litter and he was a singleton. Girl, I cried in my shower. All of your stories of oh you crying. Oh my God. Hey, that dog mended to my soul. And if you've ever met Boone, you know. Like the dog like reaches into your soul and is like, I'm here to take it. And he is the sweetest, goofiest. I mean, he was a happy puppy. And I mean, he would sleep in our room loose at like 12 weeks old. Like he was awesome. And so to do that breeding, I ended up buying two vials of frozen semen on Allie. Now I had bred Mia the heat prior to Judah, who was the son of Allie and he's alive. So I was like, okay, I really liked these puppies. I wasn't too concerned because I had four puppies in, well, I had seven puppies in that litter but she stalled out and I wanted to take her to the vet. And then I wasn't fully whelping the litter. It was here, but I did have help. And oxytocin was given, no contractions happened. And then it, finally I was like, no, I'm taking her to the vet. So I took her to the vet and there was one stuck sideways and it had died and killed the two behind it. So she ended up having a C-section and she had the four naturally and then the three passed away. And so the three, there were three girls and one male and the one male ended up being a crip. And I was super, you know, upset about it because I had sold him for a thousand dollars on a co-own and I was you know I told the owner prior I was like hey he's a crip but like he's a DDR so sometimes they're slow to mature and it'll drop and if it drops before like I think it's like 12 or 16 weeks it's okay but if it doesn't we can't breed this dog right so she was totally fine with it she didn't have any problems with that and I sold him and the three girls ended up great in a roo was one of them and I kept back through and I was like okay this litter went fine. I feel confident buying the semen. So I bought two vials of semen. It was like hers. And which was so nice of the lady who sold it to me because she was like, I'm not really selling it, but I really like your female because she was a pure DDR, is a pure DDR. And so was Allie. So it would be like a pure DDR breeding. And back then, I was like, okay, this sounds great, you know? And so the male puppy was about six or seven months old and he started limping on his left leg. I believe it was his left. And x-rays were done and there was nothing on the x-ray that was bad. And I was like, the owner was like, I don't have a good feeling about it. And I'm like, I don't either. And you know, she was my best friend at the time. So I was like, do what you need to do, figure out what's going on. Okay. And so she did a CT scan and they found a fragmented piece in his elbow. And they were like, he's going to have to have surgery, this and that. And she didn't get insurance on him. And so I was like, okay, well, what do you want? You know? And like back then, I think I was just so people pleasing that like, I wanted to do anything for anyone because I'm like, you're my best friend. I want to give you everything. And yeah. so she was like, well, I don't know. What do you think is fair? And I was like, well, technically he was a 20 puppy, but I only sold him for a thousand dollars because I co-owned it. And I was like, well, clearly he can never be bred, but how about I send you 20 because the surgery was five grand and I help pay for the surgery. Right. And so she was like, okay, sounds great. And then I was like, and I know you wanted to do sport with him. So we can talk about a puppy or something later on. Right. Like I'll give you another co-op. And she was like, okay, that sounds perfect. I don't think I would want a puppy. I think I would want an older dog. And I'm like, no problem. Like that is no problem. I'll do everything for you possible because I love you and I want you to be happy and I want you to reach your dreams. And I'm so sorry that this happened. Right. So when we talked to the people who did the CT scan, or she talked to the people, they said that the reason potentially that he had his arms grow at different rates, which caused the fragmented piece, was because when he was, he was born first, and we had to literally pull him out of Mia. And in doing so, they think that we might have fractured a growth plate, and which made sense. Like, when a vet is telling you this, it makes sense. And I'm like, okay, like, all right, that sounds good. Like, I'm still not that I can't breed to the, the dog's dad, you know, because I had the frozen at this time. And I was like, you know, I talked to my vet and I was like, what do you think I should do? And she was like, well, I mean, if they're saying they think the growth rate was fractured, I don't see a problem because the other three dogs are great. And I'm like, yeah, yeah I mean, 
Looking at it now, I'm like, no, I shouldn't have done that given what I know now. But hindsight is always 20. So yeah. I paid to have her boarded at Hamby Road. I don't know. I think I spent like two or something like that on the surgical insemination. So we did a TCI and then we did a surgical. I want to say we did a TCI. We might have done two surgicals with both vials of semen. So I used every single bit of this dog trying to get this litter because this dog was born in the early two. So this was very old semen. So anyway, I was praying and praying and praying and praying and praying. And I'm like, Lord, please let me be pregnant. Like I would love a long coated male, please out of her. And then we got the x-ray done of Mia and she had one puppy. So I asked Hamby Road if they would do her C-section as well. Hours later, now mind you, I'm already like five grand into this litter and I've got one puppy and I'm like, okay. <laughs> all right, it's okay. I have a job. It's fine. You know, like it's fine. I love Mia. She's a phenomenal dog. I own her daughter. These are phenomenal dogs. And anybody that's ever met one of the Mia babies loves the Mia babies because they're very, very nice dogs, especially for like DDRs who get a consistent bad rat. Yeah. So I had her C-section done and I don't know who's calling me right now. Sorry. And Boone was born. And I remember holding him and just crying in the vet office. And I was like, the prodigal son. Like it was like, <laughs> I felt like it was like the Lion King up in there. And I just got home and I was like, this is it. Like, this is everything I wanted because his hair was wavy. And I'm sending pictures of him to Francesca, you know, and I'm like, is he a long coat? Do you think he's a long I'm sure Frankie's going to watch this and be like, Carolyn, I remember that because you're crazy. And so as he got older, the cuter and cuter and cuter he got. I mean, I watched him every single day run around my house at three weeks old with Mia and Conan and he was everything I wanted. It was like all my dreams in a stud dog DDR were this. Like it was, it happened. And yeah. I remember going to his vet checkup at six weeks and my vet Holly, cause she was doing my vaccines at the time. I brought him over and I'm like, dude, look how big this puppy is. He's awesome. And she looked at me and she was like, I can't feel either testicle. Oh no. Like, I remember that day. And I was like, well, is there a chance that they'll drop? And she was like, I do think there is a chance. However, I cannot feel either one. If you take a puppy in at six weeks, a male puppy, and they can not feel either testicle, you're in trouble. I'm telling you that right now, you're in trouble. So I took him back at nine weeks, no testicles. Took him back at 12 weeks, no testicles. And I remember looking at my husband and I was like, he's creeping up on 15, 16 weeks. I cannot breed this dog. I cannot breed this dog. And like, I had to look at Brayden and I'm like, if he can't fulfill that for me and I can't show him and I can't do everything that I wanted to do with him, what life is it here? Like what yeah. life is it here? I mean, that's not gonna be fun for him. Being around all these intact females going crazy. Like I just didn't want that life for him. And then as much as I loved him, I mean, I would shower with the dog. Like. He would like sleep while I was in the shower. Like he was absolutely everything I had wanted in a puppy. And unfortunately I did have to place him. So, so I posted online that I was looking to sell Boone. And at the time he was just a double crip. Um, and I made sure anybody who inquired about him seriously knew that. And there was a chance that he would need abdominal surgery because they might not ever drop. I had no problem sharing that information. So Boone's owner reached out and she had actually been on my wait list for my giddy litter, which was my A litter, but something had happened of moving or I can't really remember a hundred percent, but it just didn't work out. And when she saw Boone was like available, she reached out to me and like sent this long message. And I remember getting that message and just like, falling to my knees in my shower because I knew that's where Boone was supposed to go. And I just had a feeling, right? That was it. So I told her, I was like, he's 3,500. I've spent five on this litter, not including whelping costs, not including vet like shot costs. Like that is just to him to be born, you know? So I felt like 30 for a pure DDR from frozen, what his genetics were at that point in that time. So she had no problem with that. She flew in or she drove, I think they drove anyway, but they got here and I'm telling them about Boone and I'm like, yeah, and I'm giving them full disclosure. I don't remember if they met Rue or not, but then I'm telling them about Koki, the brother. And I'm like, hey, I need you to get insurance on this puppy. Like non, non-negotiable Um, because his brother had to have surgery on his elbow. Now they said it was a fractured growth plate, but like, I don't know because he's also a crip and your puppy's also a crip. So like, let's be on the precaution side and please get insurance on this puppy because of this. Like I had her in my house and I told her right in the eyes, this is, this is what happened. Okay. 
And she said to me, it's totally okay. We'll get insurance on him and whatever happens, you know, we'll take care of it. And I'm like, wow, you're a great person. And he went back home. Well, it wasn't, I want to say maybe because he was almost four months. So maybe around like five or six months, he started limping as well. And I said, get a seat because it didn't for the brother, get a CT. And I have those text messages. I have all my receipts in a binder printed out. I said, get a CT on this dog. So she did. And lo and behold, he also had a fragmented piece and had to get his elbow scope. <sighs> yeah. So obviously I'm like, what the heck? Like, and, and mind you, during all of this, the first litter is getting older and getting x-rays done and doing all, like it's a progression within a year's time. And all three of the sisters, the one I kept went SV, A1, A1, OFA prelim, excellent and normal elbows. And the other two sisters went OFA good hips and normal elbows. All three of them are fine. So I don't know why it happened. So I'm over here like doing as much research as I can because I'm like, why the heck did this happen? So then I start like dumpster diving into like every dog and like spending hours and hours looking at DDR stud dogs and dogs in the pedigree. And like, I find crips everywhere and I find elbow dysplasia everywhere. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Like I thought because it was an outcross of five generations, I, there was one dog, four or five. But I thought this is an outcross for a DDR. These dogs should be healthier. Like that is my mindset. But without fully realizing that these dogs have been so line bred and so inbred and so back to back and bred 80 times to the same back dog, because the, there's only select lines of DDR still left, that they are also ridden with a lot of issues. And I wasn't fully educated on it enough clearly. And no DDR person I talked to told me not to. So I'm over here like, yippity doo, sounds good. Looking back, I would have bred Mia to a pure West working and freaking outcrossed that out of it and brought in a ton of healthy blood and made it a better line. That's what I should have done. And I didn't have that opportunity because I didn't know any better. So anyway, going forward, he goes through the surgery and everything like that. And obviously still has some lameness, still has some issues. He ends up developing a spinal issue, allergies, and has a mild left hip, you know, like he's just kind of like a ticking time bomb of a dog. And so the owner's like, my insurance is about to run out on him because I we've maxed it out at like 10k and I want to be fully refunded for this dog. And I was like, I was like, okay, okay, like, okay, like, all right. Um, and I listed her. I did I don't have the email. I should have pulled up the email, but I listed her a billion options as well. I was like, listen, I'll refund you. I'll give you a replacement dog for free. I'll take Boone back for free. And then you can get a puppy and then I'll raise Boone. And then when that puppy's old enough, you can have Boone back. Like, or I'll raise a dog for you and then give you an older dog that's already started. Like I listed out half a dozen options. And she said, no, I just want my refund. And I was like, okay, like, what are you gonna do when she's telling you she doesn't have enough money to afford therapy for the dog? Like physical therapy, what are you going to do in that moment? I mean, I'm sitting here and I'm like, okay, I'll give you whatever you want. Right? Right? Right. And so I did. I fully refunded her. And after that, it was like, fuck Carolyn. Fuck Carolyn. Fuck Carolyn. Because she gave me this horrible dog with all of these issues that she didn't care about. And she's a backyard breeder and a puppy mill. Fuck her. And I look at that and I get so angry because I did everything she wanted. I was there for every single issue. I was there supporting her. I was there answering phone calls. I was there talking with her for hours on the phone. Like it wasn't like you got a fucked up dog and I said ghost bye. Yeah. I was with you through it all. I'm the one who developed the bond with this dog for the first four months of his life and so it gets me heated like my heart rate is like pounding because it gets me so upset because she acts like I'm a villain and I hope anybody hearing this hears the story and is like wait a minute wait a minute so that's this story okay so now we'll talk about this story because this is also tea everybody wants to hear because it's also another question and the question is what happened Isn't to the dog yes what happened to the dog that got stolen from you or what whatever the question is and that goes into this story as well so remember the first dog I told you about that had the elbow issue that she paid a thousand for and I paid 20 towards the surgery. Remember that one? Koki. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, so she said, I want a male and it needs to get along with Koki and my other dog. Okay. And I want a young started male that can get along with my other intact male and get along with my neutered male and live in the house and be okay in a crate and do protection and do obedience and be a sport dog and not be reactive and be confident. That's a lot of ends. 
and have perfect orthopedics. Uh -huh. But so that was the list. Okay. And I said, okay, I can do that because I'm your friend. And how about I'll do that. I'll make sure it's healthy. I'll pay for the healthy. I'll keep the dog. It'll be my dog. And then I'll give you the dog a comb and I get it back for breeding. I'll get it back for showing. And you can have the dog live with you and be your sport dog. And you can actually do the things with this dog. And I'll start it. You know, I'll start the dog because me, I'm miss. I want everybody to be happy. Nobody's going to fuck me over. <laughs> so I keep a puppy back out of my A litter and I do not keep the dog back. That I wanted to keep Agro, which was Astro. I sold him to Jen because he was the highest drive, the nicest working dog in that litter. But I looked at that dog and I'm like, I don't know how you're gonna do in a neighborhood, in a townhouse that's three stories, cause you're quite a handful. So I was like, you know, I'm gonna sell you to somebody that is young, ambitious, wants to do potential police work. Let's go that route, right? So I kept Eisen, who was my second pick, but it was my first pick for like her and mine. Yeah. So I kept Eisen back and he lived in our home. He slept right there on that rug. Like he was the best dog, went everywhere with us, went to the gas station with Brayden every morning to get a freaking energy drink because he loves to spend money. And then, um, oh, and I, yeah, I did bite work with him. I started him in obedience. I did his orthos. I did his embark. Um, I mean, his orthos alone were $8. Did He came back with SV. Excellent. Excellent. He was DM clear and bark clear carried for bike or carried for black like he was the dog and oh, I y'all he was and I championed him in two show weekends because he was that nice of a dog put best of breed took group like a placement in group he was such a nice dog non-reactive no fear period like just a really good easy dog and so a year old came and I was trialing up at their club and I was like okay that's fine like I'll meet you and not a problem I'll you can have Eisen because he fits everything that you're looking for and more. And so she took Eisen and I'm like, okay, that's great. Like, you know, when you go out of town, you can leave him with me. Like, it's no problem. But like, just so you know, you know, he's a year old. If you don't let him out first, like he'll excited pee in his crate. I'm like, so make sure you let him out first. Like blah, blah, blah. I just got his orthos done like a few days and have a whole binder full of printouts of Eisen and health checks and everything. My vet checked him and did a wellness check, everything. And everything was normal. Everything was excellent, excellent reports. And so the only thing I think she mentioned was his ears needed to be a little bit clean but that was it um and so she gets him and then I get him back in like February I believe it was to board him to not board to watch him for, for all three dogs and she came down here stayed at my home like you have to remember back then we were best friends so like I'm like yeah I'll do anything for you I think she did end up paying me something to watch them but I told her she didn't need to but anyway so they stay back in my house no problems and I guess a couple days in Koki the big male big male he was like 90 pounds 80 90 ridiculous dog like giant really? dog Oh my God, he's huge. His head is like this big, giant dog. And so he ended up, I don't know if you've ever had a dog do it, but where they rub their nose and like yep. on a metal crate and they scratch yep. it right here. And he had like a little scratch here and like a little bump here, you know? And so I put like cream on it and sprayed Betricin on it, you know? And I didn't think anything of it. I'm like, wow, well, crazy boy saw me letting out other dogs and started barking and rubbing his nose on the crate. That's not a completely abnormal thing that happens with quite a few boarding dogs. Not every right. dog is great at the crate. If you are good at crate training your dog, they shouldn't do that. Right. So she comes, she comes to get them and goes, and Brayden can attest to this, goes off the rocker on me in a way, in a passive aggressive way that I didn't tell her that this dog had scraped his nose and that how I didn't think it was important to tell her that he got injured. And I'm telling you, it was like this big. Like it was literally like a little scrape and a little bump. And it wasn't anything that Vetrisin in two days would heal up. And so I think that was like the start. But see, you have to remember at this time, this was the same time period that Michaela was running out of money and wanted a refund. So like all of this convergent was going on, right? And those two became best friends because they have half or three quarter brother. So with both have elbow dysplasia, right? So they're like best friends forever. And I guess her hate, Michaela's hatred for me was seeping over into Ellen's. And so it just kind of festered. And a lot of things weren't said to me from Ellen. And I was like, hey, you just need to talk to me. Like what's wrong? So like after that, she took her dogs home and she got really quiet and kind of ghosted me until like, it was like March or April. And I was like, dude, what is wrong? Like, where did you go? Like what's going on? And that's when, that's when we talked and she like really blew up on me like crying on the phone that I didn't tell her that her dog had a scrape on his nose 
And then she tells me right after she took Eisen home that he had peed in the crate and that that it was not normal for a year old dog to ever use the bathroom in a crate and that it was absolutely not normal and there was something wrong. So a few weeks goes by and then she ends up taking him to the vet and running a urinalysis and it came back that he had a UTI. So she put him on antibiotics and it went away. And so she's on the phone telling me and he is in so much pain. He was in so much pain with this UTI that you didn't even know he had. And how could you ever not know he had a UTI? I mean, I just don't understand. Then you didn't tell me that my dog got his nose scraped. Like, what kind of person are you? It's, um, um, talk still sometimes excited peas on the crate and he's two and a half. Um, <laughs> but, and he does not have a UTI, fun fact. But, but I told her, I was like, why didn't you tell me he had a UTI? I would have helped pay for it. Like I would have helped. And she was like, well, I just didn't think it was important at the time. And I didn't feel like I could come to you and tell you that. And I was like, well, he is my dog. You should tell me that. Like, I should have known about that months ago. Like, why are you just now telling me this? She's like, well, you didn't care enough to know. And I was like, how would I know? The dog literally maybe peed in his crate once a month if he got overexcited and I didn't let him out first. Otherwise, he never, he never strained to urinate. He never urinated in multiple places. I mean, he wasn't even lifting his leg to pee. Like, his urine was clear. Like, why would I ever suspect like he's not peeing blood like he's not peeing and nothing coming out like i know enough about dogs that i like know if a dog has a urinary problem and yeah. what i believe happened was the stress of going to a new play traveling new home new dogs new everything probably triggered it and and that's probably why he developed it i don't think he was suffering from a uti for months and i didn't know about it like if a dog well, has a dog it's bacteria be so if he laid down in like a rain puddle or laid in a pile of shit i mean there's so many ways that they could get it but i've never seen a dog have symptoms where they're in pain i had her on speakerphone so like brayden heard everything and brayden's looking at me like she okay like is this like what is going on and i feel like completely blindsided i do i absolutely do because i then tell her okay like i'm so sorry like i am genuinely so sorry like i hurt you i never meant to hurt you i never meant to do that i love you like i care about you you're my best friend like i'm so sorry that you didn't feel like you could come to me and talk to me because i always want to be able to talk to you like i always want you to be able to talk to me but see she had other people she could talk to now so it was kind of like well maybe i don't need Carolyn and also she had people in her ear and she was like well maybe she is a bad person and I'm like things just aren't adding up so time goes on and I'm telling her I'm like hey yeah I have a dog show I need to enter Eisen in I believe it was July and I was like I've paid two entries for him it's in Atlanta I can come and get him meanwhile she's like five hours from me so I'm like I can come and get him and take him to the show and I said and now that you've had him for like six months we need to settle a co-own contract like, I get we're best friends, but it's six months. And like, she had been asking me like, hey, have you worked on the contract? Have She she, she was very diligent with that. And I'm like, I'm busy or yeah, sorry. Like, she was my best friend. So I didn't think a contract was like life or death situation, right? Yeah. Like, I would have never sent her eyes in if I thought she was going to be like, screw you, he's my dog. Like, I would have never done that. Even with a contract, I would have never done that. So I finally was like, yeah, let's sit down and let's go over, you know, a contract. So I wrote one up and I, we went over so I went over to a good friend of mine's house at the time and I need for the record to know that I absolutely still love this person I have no hard feelings towards this person um, her and I ended up growing apart but it wasn't anything either of us did to each other it was just a lot of miscommunication and then a lot of environmental things happening out of my control um, and it's Julianne if anybody has you know followed along she was my best friend truly like ride or die I still would do anything for her I absolutely still still love her. But obviously her and I relationship are just solely on a breeder owner basis. It's nothing more than that. But at the time she was like my go-to for absolutely everything. She knows more about me than probably anybody on social media other than Samantha. Samantha's the other one that knows it. Um, and then we'll get there in a minute. But so Samantha and I went over to Juliana's house and I was like, Hey, I need y'all to be witnesses for this conversation. So she didn't even know Ellen didn't even know that they were there. That was the best part. So I put her on speakerphone and I told them to be quiet. 
And I pulled up my laptop and we started going over the contract, which I thought was super understandable. Um, and it was basically like, we co-own the dog, but like I get to breed to him. She gets to train him and love him and have him in her home and, and moving forward. And if anybody ever wants to see the contract, I have no problem emailing it to anybody that wants to read it. I thought it was super reasonable. And we went on the phone piece by piece and agreed to each and every section. She had no problems with it. She was super excited. She was like, I'll see you at the dog show this weekend and I've booked a hotel room and I'm so excited. Sounds good. And I'll have it printed and signed and give to you this weekend. And I'm like, great. I've already paid two entries. So I'm glad you're going. I need the dog. So then I believe that was on a Wednesday. It was either Tuesday or Wednesday. So then Thursday, she texts me that her husband wants their lawyer to look it over. And I'm like, that's a red flag. I was like, or it might have been she sent it on Wednesday, whatever text message. And so I popped off. I was like, what do you mean a lawyer? This is between you and I, not me, you and your husband that I don't even know. Like what? He's not even in the dog world. What are you doing? And so obviously I'm like panicking and I'm like, you have my dog. This is my dog, my dog, my dog, my dog. My dog. So um, then don't hear from Ellen, okay? And then I get this beautiful, horrific email. The night, it was like Thursday night. Mind you, the dog show was Saturday and Sunday. This horrible email at like nine or 10 o'clock at night. Dear Carolyn Woodward, due to, oh my, oh my God. And it was from her husband. It wasn't even from her. And it was from her husband. And it was like, after, you know, everything that's been going, that's gone on due to Cokie's elbow dysplasia and your warranty and you sold us a defective puppy you owe us a replacement and this is our old dog and he's our dog and he's not your dog and you have to sign over all the paperwork on this dog or else I would have lost he my shit you want to know the best part about this? Is that my contract what? my contract at the time only war only warranted the hips I'm so dead I'm dead I'm actually and I have the contract if anybody um yeah so um that was the funniest I think the best part was like what are you talking about clearly you don't know what your wife and I have talked about because you're not owed a fucking thing not a thing and I just bleep myself um if you're listening to this on the podcast and not on the YouTube um but yeah my contract did not warranty elbows so I owed you nothing but out of the kindness of my heart I paid twenty dollars towards your dog's elbow dysplasia and then I gave you an already started and health tested already ready amazing adult dog to co-own with me and then now you're telling me I owe you, I owe you on a thousand dollar dog that I lost money on, that I paid for the surgery. Yeah, so we've been there. So anyway, he sends this whole like threatening thing. And I guess at the time, my secretary of state for my LLC had lapsed and he was like, and you're not even compliance with the laws and blah, blah. And I was like, uh, yeah, it was a crazy email. And anybody that wants it, reach out. Cause I used to have sent it to probably 80 people. I have no filter clearly. And Wait. it was, <laughs> what? You didn't need to send it to me. I'll email it to you when we get off this. Make a note. It's, it <laughs> is so garbage. It is disgusting. So obviously I talked to my lawyer, my attorney about it. And I was like, yo, what do I do about this? And he was like, well, technically, here's the bad part. Technically, I did give them the dog. Even though the dog is registered in only my name, his microchip is only my name, all of his paperwork is only my name. Because they have that dog in their possession, I have to take, I would have had to take them to court to claim ownership. And then goes into the lovely Chris, her husband, who basically tells me that he drowned me in legal fees because he has enough money to do it. And I'll be honest with you, he does, they do. They have enough money to take me to court for two years and drag this out for everything I've got. And I don't come from money. I don't have daddy's money. I don't have husband's money. My money that I dog train, I work for, and every single thing in my house I have paid for. So I don't oh, have- awesome. Yeah, that's right. That's sugar, sugar mama behavior. Yeah, and I don't I don't have that luxury. I don't have that luxury of having thirty, forty thousand dollars to th to try to get a dog back. Like I just don't. Like I had about ten to twenty on like borderline retainer that I could pull if I absolutely had to. And but at at that point it's like, okay, well I have his brother back. Like I have aggro back. And God, I'm telling you. 
I don't know the religion of anybody and I would never put my religion on somebody else. Okay. However, I do believe there is a God and I do believe things happen for a reason. And I got aggro back right before I gave Eisen away. And I'm telling you right now, if I had not gotten aggro back, that would, that would have ruined me. Like that would have like horribly devastated me because the only reason Anki let me breed to Duplo was because I planned to keep a dog back. I had wanted a Duplo puppy for years and I finally had my opportunity to import two females bred to him. And that was my whole plan was to keep a puppy back. So I planned to keep a male back out of A litter and then a female back out of D litter, which was both Duplo kids. And that was my goal. And if I had not been able to buy aggro back, listen, people can say all they want about Jen. People can say it. I don't give a shit. Okay. I don't give a motherfucking shit what you have to say about Jen. I don't care about her. She let me buy my dog back. She let me buy him back. I don't give a shit if it was for five grand. I don't care. I would have paid more because I wanted that dog back and I'm so glad I did. I am so glad I paid the money and got him back because if I had not and I had lost Eisen, I mean, I don't, I don't know where I'd be right now. That, that broke me. And a lot of people don't really know this either. So if you're watching or if you're listening to this podcast, like shit's about to get real. But Brayden and I had actually been trying for a while to have a baby, um, about six months. And I had skipped that period and I was about to take a pregnancy test. And I was so excited because, you know, like that's like the best feeling in the world when you're trying so, so, so hard and you finally feel like you're getting there. And I got that news about Eisen that night and I was on the floor of my kitchen for two hours crying. I couldn't get up. I couldn't eat. I couldn't drink. I couldn't sleep. Brayden literally filmed me and sent me, sent it to his mom. And he was like, what do I do? And she was just like, let her cry. Let her cry because that was my dog. Like I get everybody goes, oh, she has a lot of dogs. But like when you raise a dog, from birth. You syringe feed a dog that is on the brink of dying because the mother didn't have milk and you save all four puppies and they made it. They made it. You took two weeks off of work just so you could tube feed every two hours, four puppies, and you devote your life to this. How can you even for a second think I didn't care? How can anybody say that? I don't do this for free. I give a part of myself with every single litter that I have. You get a part of me. And so when that happened, I had a full-blown panic attack. And that Sunday, I bled more than I've ever bled in my life. Emotionally, physically. And it was horrible. It was horrible. Because my emotional state took over. And my body could not, could not, get, it could not keep a viable pregnancy. And, so um, I, it sucks. Fuck it sucks. And I called Juliana that night, fucking bawling my eyes out in the shower, bleeding out. And I'm like, I hate these people. <laughs> like you took two dreams of me away that night. Not just my dog. And this is real. This is real life. These are real families. And anybody out there listening to this, if you think this is a fucking joke get out of dogs get out of dogs we were trying so hard to start a family and i feel i felt robbed i felt robbed of my dog i felt robbed of my family and i i know everything happens for a reason don't get me wrong i don't but when you get your hopes up because finally it happens Finally, things are going your way, and then the world comes crumbling all at once. What do you do? How do you handle it? How do you speak about it? And, you know, to, any, to anybody out there that's ever lost a pregnancy, like, you, you have my heart. And anybody out there that's tried and been so unsuccessful and have that hope and it get taken away, it's something that stays with you. It stays with you. And I'm really thankful for Juliana. You know, I don't care what we went through at the end. If I had not had her that night, I, I don't know what I would have done. Um, she truly, she truly got me through a lot, a lot, a lot. I don't really talk about because it hurts because it makes me cry on camera. But I think people need to know. They need to know yeah. this. This stuff isn't isn't a joke. It's not it's not funny to 
to somebody to give you a dog and you say, fuck you. It's not funny. There's no humor in it. When I see you trialing that dog at a AS trial, American Shitchen trial, and it's my dog. It's not funny. It's not funny. That was a $3,500 puppy that I put $1,000 worth of health testing to, championed in UKC, started in dog sport, and spent a year of my life with. And then you took another life at that. I have, I have nothing for them. And I hope they listen to this. I really do. Oh, and it gets better. So after that, I don't reply back to the email, obviously, because I'm like, fuck this dude. So I try to text Ellen. And at the end of the email, it was like, if you try to contact Ellen, I'll hit you with a harassment. Um, I'll sue you for harassment. And so I have not talked to Ellen since that day on the phone. And then right after when she said she had to have her lawyer talk, talk to her husband, I've not talking to, I've not spoke one word to her. She's not talked to me. Not once. Um, I know it's crazy. Any issues that have happened recently, I've seen screenshots of everything. Yep. Anyone that has had an issue with her in the last, I don't know, six months or so, maybe even more, like I've seen yep. everything. I know everything that's been said on both sides. I could tell everyone right now, I've never seen one red flag with Carolyn ever. She is nothing but. I've never seen a breeder try to remedy the situation so much. And, you know, it's always fucking her over in the end. Like, she'll try to remedy it by losing money, losing, yep. losing something. Like, someone's not happy with a dog that they bought. And she's like, okay, I'll give you a free board and train. I honestly don't know anyone that would offer the amount that Carolyn has offered. And again, I've seen screenshots of these things, like has offered people in return for something that one, isn't her fault, two, isn't her problem. Like, yeah. you know, a lot of people care about these things. Like, you know, they don't want this to happen, but Carolyn's like, I'll give you free board and trains. I'll give you yeah. a replacement property. I'll give you a yeah. refund, this, that, and the other. Like no breeders offer that. Just so everyone knows, mm -hmm. everyone that wants to talk shit about Carolyn all day, She's a backyard breeder. And all these things, like she could have posted, while well, all these people are talking shit about her, she could have posted all of the things that she just told on the podcast. Yeah. She could have said all of that. She could have destroyed yeah. many people's reputations by now. And she always chooses the high road. And what does that get her? More people talking shit. People talking shit about everything she does, calling her yeah. a puppy mill, a backyard breeder. I don't know how you call someone a backyard breeder who either health test entitles their own dogs or buys them health tested entitled because doesn't Peace. a backyard breeder not do those things like how about you guys go after the people that are breeding double dm carrier dogs how about Absolutely. you do that um or you not know, dm so testing at all or that yeah. um there's just so many other people that you could spend your time going after that are actual backyard breeder puppy mills and she's not one of them so i just well, needed to i do so think too one of the things that i feel like consistently gets kind of thrown out there in and i've i've read it in groups is that oh well carolyn went back on her word she promised me a refund and i haven't gotten it right like she went back on her word blah 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 okay and i need to shed light on that situation